Little Women by Louisa May Alcott Set in Massachusetts in the 1860s, this simply and beautifully written book is an honest, realistic and warm coming-of-age novel that has the power to heal a careworn mind with the balance it manages to strike between flouting conventions, refusing to give up one's true essence and sacrificing self by adjusting and prioritizing interests in order to achieve higher goals like the welfare of family and loved ones. Readers who derive comfort from the portrayal of strong female friendship in literature may find ample joy in the life story of the Mart sisters. Austinites, who have relished the true friendship of Jane and Elizabeth Bennet, will certainly love the similar bond shared by Joe and Beth March. I write friendship and not just sibling love, as I do not believe the strength of the affection between these characters had only to do with blood relation. Elizabeth may have loved Lydia, Kitty and Mary because she had to, but she loved Jane for being, well, Jane. During the American Civil War, Mr. March volunteers to serve in the Union Army as a chaplain, leaving his wife and four daughters at home. Gentle, traditionally good Meg, tomboy Joe, timid, angelic Beth, and vain, manipulative Amy. The narrative is in two parts. The first follows their life events over the course of a year, with the sisters forming a close friendship with Laurie, the grandson of their wealthy neighbour Mr. Lawrence, Laurie and his tutor Mr. Brooke becoming a fixture at their home and Mr. Lawrence becoming a father figure to them. The girls are left on their own when their father falls ill and their mother travels to Washington DC to take care of him aided by Mr. Brooke. Beth falls ill with scarlet fever but recovers and the first part ends with their parents returned home and Meg engaged to be married to Mr. Brooke. Part 2 deals with Meg's married life and Joe's departure to New York to pursue writing where she meets the steady and kind German professor Friedrich Baer who is her love interest. Following the heart-rending death of Beth, Laurie, who was earlier infatuated with Joe, ends up falling in love with Amy. The character of Joe is extremely refreshing considering the kind of stereotypical heroines of that time period. She seems to have been deliberately created to break every single feminine prototype. She's fiercely independent, genuine, quick to speak her mind and full of rebelliousness. Her feisty impetuousness and short temper are flaws that make her more real and lovable. Her choice of partner especially avoids conforming to the romantic ideals of the time. Instead of swooning over Laurie just because he has traits similar to hers, Laurie shares a passionate nature, struggles with being manly enough to suit his grandfather while Joe struggles with being ladylike and feminine enough for the world, Joe makes a sensible decision regarding her future by accepting Friedrich, who is older and seemingly unsuited for her, but actually has a nature to exactly complement, soften and nurture hers, much like Colonel Brandon and Marianne Dashwood of Sense and Sensibility. It is a feel-good book with wholesome characters having infinitely more substance than the spineless heroines lurking inside some young adult fictions nowadays. Mm -hmm.